Hi everyone, and welcome back to Tech Bytes, Tips and Resources for Educators, brought to you by MASSP. My name is Ryan Casey, and in light of the recent school closure, uh, closure situation, I thought this would be a great time to show you some really important resources and tools that both teachers and students can use uh, to maximize some of the online learning and distance learning opportunities that are taking place right now. Um, we want to make sure that students are able to uh, access and use uh, all of the different items needed to complete assignments. We don't want them being frustrated because they can't read something or they have a hard time typing. So I'm going to cover different accessibility tools, uh, things like text-to-speech, dictation, readability, closed captioning, and some more um, that will make the work just that much easier to access so everybody can spend more time on the content and standards um, and not uh, getting frustrated uh, with their attempts at the work. So we're going to cover about five different tools. We're going to move pretty quickly from one to the next, so let's get started. So the first tool I want to make sure you are promoting with your students is closed captioning. So anytime you are sending uh, a student to watch a video, whether it be on YouTube or Vimeo, most of the video players actually, ha actually have a closed captioning um, setting that can be turned on. So in this case, I pull up actually a podcast um, normally podcasts, you know, you would listen to them somewhere else. I, I actually have it as a video on our MASSP YouTube channel. Um, so this is a good example. There's nothing to see. They can't see anything. Um, so if they uh, were listening to this and they're having hearing issues, um, this would not be a very good uh, resource or link we would want to send them. But if they turn on the closed captioning and I hit play, Yeah, so let me let me start off with the middle school and high school. Right now, what we provide is a... so I'm going to hit pause there. Uh, you can see that uh, in this case, this is an automatic setting that is applied uh, when the video gets uploaded. Um, I didn't choose the language. I didn't do anything. This was YouTube just applying the closed captioning uh, setting to it. By again, a student just has to hit that little subtitle or closed caption button. Uh, it does a pretty good job of catching the words. Some words won't be correct. Um, it might be hard to tell who's talking if there's multiple voices going on, but it's a pretty easy way um, to, to turn this option on. Uh, if you go down to the bottom right corner where you next to the share and save button, there's three little dots. If you click on that, you can actually open up a transcript as well. And in the upper right corner now, you can see, and it's time stamped, which is pretty cool, uh, it's cut up a lot, about every couple seconds, but a student could read through this as well. And if they wanted to pinpoint a certain section, um, I'm going to skip ahead. Um, they're talking about standards. If I click on this, it'll actually skip me to that point in the in the video now. So if I hit play, standards. But how do we really get computer science um, at the forefront? Of Which is pretty cool. So again, uh, if a student is struggling and they're having uh, problems with hearing, you want to make sure they are turning on the closed captioning so they can read it. And there's also a transcript available that they can read as well. Okay, so the next tool that I want to show you is a text-to-speech tool uh, that makes it a lot easier for students who maybe ha struggle reading or, again, um, have uh, impairments with, with seeing. Uh, will allow them to take an article and have it read to them, uh, some sort of web page or document that's online. So for this, I'm going to use what's called Read Aloud. Uh, this is a Google Chrome extension. Um, it's also available on Firefox. There's a lot of different ones that do uh, pretty similar uh, to this. So let's just see how this works. I have an article here about drones helping scientists uh, measure and weigh whales at sea. So um, I can go ahead and go up to my extension and it'll start playing this. One thing you want to remind students of is it's going to read the entire page advertisements are on the page uh, and that sort of thing. So if they want to just highlight a certain part or paragraph by paragraph, they can do that. That might make it a little easier. So I'm going to highlight this paragraph. I'm going to click on my little read aloud button. This shows what you can do with technology, says Frederick Christensen. A marine biologist, he studies sea life. Christensen works at the Aarhus Institute of Advanced Studies in Denmark. And I can hit stop at any time. Um, it'll resume where I hit play. This shows what you can do with technology, says Frederick Christian. 
If I pause, I can also make this screen um, a little smaller if I want, so it doesn't take up the page. I can make the font size bigger, smaller as well. I'm gonna hit stop. If I go into the settings, what's really nice about this is there's a ton of different voices you can select from. You can adjust the speed, pitch, volume, and whether or not you want that yellow um, highlighting on as well. So again, this is called Read Aloud, a really nice text-to-speech option. So in that access, uh, so in that accessibility feature, we went from uh, text to speech, so students could listen to what was being uh, displayed on the screen. We're going to flip that around now, and we're going to do speech to text. So again, if a student um, is a struggling typer, maybe they have motor skill impairment that makes it difficult for them to type things up, uh, basically they're going to dictate to have their speech turned into text on the page. I really like the voice typing feature of Google Docs. And that's what I'm going to show you now. So if you go into Tools and you select Voice Typing, this little uh, microphone icon will pop up and we just have to click on it to start speaking and our words will be captured on the screen. Uh, it's going to work very similarly to how you dictate in your phone to recognize things like uh, a period and whatnot. So I'm going to just try this real quick. And so now the document is going to capture my speech as text, period. You'll want to remind students to speak slowly and pronounce their words properly so the text is accurately displayed on the page, period. And I just click on the microphone and I can stop. So again, that'll definitely help some students out who need that feature um, and that's found right in Google Docs. Another great resource that you can use is an accessibility tool is called Vocaroo. That's V-O-C-A-R-O-O dot com. And that's where I am right now. And this is going to let you uh, record your voice. And then you can share that as an online link for others to hear. So maybe you are a teacher and you want to um, explain a project or some directions. So you don't give them some sort of really long document or text-heavy document that obviously you aren't there in person to explain. Uh, you could use Vocaroo for that. You can maybe walk somebody through um, an IEP paperwork or some other really important paperwork. Um, all you simply have to do is hit the little red microphone to record your uh, audio recording. If you already have one recorded on your computer, you can hit upload to upload that file here. And again, that'll turn that into an online link. So now all you're doing is sending the link and people don't have to download really long um, uh, audio files, especially for those who have slow or limited internet. So I'm going to click the red button. Right now, as you can see, I am recording an online audio file in Vocaroo. I have about eight seconds recorded so far, and I'm going to hit the stop button now. You can listen to it, or you can go back and recreate it again. Right now, as you can see, I am recording an online audio file in I'm going to hit save and share. And now I can send this out on social media. I can download it. I can embed it onto my Google Classroom or Google web page. And then I also have this link that I can then copy and share to email out or send out to those who need to listen to that file. The last accessibility resource that I want to show you is called colorsafe.co. That's colorsafe.co. And as you can see by the description here, it's a website that's going to have you select different background colors you're using in your presentations or documents and compare that with the colors of the foreground or the font to make sure that there is enough contrast so that those with visual impairments, like being colorblind, can still accurately see the information. And this is all done according to Web Content Accessibility Guidelines Standards. Uh, as you click through the options, you'll be given a score with like a little green check mark. Obviously, the higher the score, the better it is for those people with the impairments to see the information. So I'm going to hit get started. I'm going to select the background color that I'm using. I can choose the font, font size, font weight, whatever the standard is that I'm trying to meet and I can hit generate a color palette. So this is going to be, give me the different colors that I can use with that red pinkish background color. You can see I have a little score over here. So as I click on different items, I need my goal is to have a score of three. I keep getting the green check mark on all of these. 
Certain ones have different scores depending on the size and color. And notice that it's not giving me a color to use that won't meet that score. So this is just a good way to check and to make sure that you have enough contrast in those presentations, in those documents, so that everybody can see them. So hopefully there were a few tools that you can start incorporating, um, especially since for the next couple of months, based on the school closure situation we're in, you're not going to be there you know, face to face to help them through, explain some of these documents, or navigate a web page. Um, and really, these are really good standards and tools that you should be using, even with your face-to-face -face direct instruction as well. Accessibility, obviously, is a, a big issue for an important population of our students. So hopefully these resources are ones that will come in handy for you over the next uh, couple of months and into the next school year teaching. Uh, remember, you can watch any of our Tech Bytes by he heading over to the MASSP.com website or by going to the MASSP YouTube channel. I would love for you to like this video and like and subscribe to our channel. We'd appreciate that very much. Uh, thanks for watching, everybody, and have a great day.